Hello everybody, uh, I'm starting up a brand new series, playing a classic educational game called The Yukon Trail. This is made by Mech, M-E-C-C, -C, the same company that did Oregon Trail. This, however, is not anywhere near as good as the Oregon Trail, in at least in my opinion, and probably many others. We're going to start up the journal for LLP gonna get in here we start off in Seattle on August 23rd 1897 uh, we have zero pounds of food we have $350 in cash we can click on different things uh, there's a map and we are here we're going to take a ship to either Daiya, Dai, whatever it's pronounced, or Skagway. Skagway uh, sounds like something from Borderlands, you know, a path of those bloody dog like creatures, Skags. And Dai uh, sounds like basically what a lot of people did on this trail. Uh, our ultimate destination is Dawson. He'll never let go. So we're going to get going here, and we can talk to various people. Now, I used to have the CD-ROM version of this game, and the CD-ROM version of this game had voice acting and all that, and it was, yeah, it was okay at past time, um, somewhat educational, but you get to hear me do really horrible voice acting. Hi, stranger. You'll be leading a ticket to board any of the ships to Alaska. If I were you, I'd book first class passes to the... Uh... Well, I've never heard of it, so where is it? Why, well, the uh, is the gateway to the Klondike. It sits on the southern coast of Alaska Territory. Should I be Alaskan? Prettiest little town you ever did so. From there, it's an easy hike and boat ride to Dawson City and Gold Country. You are a liar. Let's ask more about the trip from whatever this, however this is pronounced. I'm going to say D, yeah, because, I don't know, illiteracy is cool. From Dahlia, you take a scenic Chilkoot Trail, the shortest route over the coastal mountains. On the other side, you'll launch a boat from Lake La Berge and float down the Yukon River straight into Dawson. And you can actually just loop through the same dialogue over and over again. Can I buy supplies in D? Yeah. Of course. I recommend it highly. There's no sense in lugging everything from Seattle up to Alaska. Yeah, it's not exactly uh, accurate. What are my other choices? Well, you can go to Skagway, which is just a stone's throw from D. Yeah. But that town's nothing but a hangout for hooligans and con artists. You look like a con artist. Can I buy a ticket? There's a ticket office just up the street. Just tell the clerk that you want to go to D. Yeah. Well, it's been nice talking to you. Yeah, let's find out about Skagway. Hello, Fred. I bet you're a stampeder. The best way to start your journey is to board a ship to Skagway. Where the fuck is that? Skagway is the main premier port in southern Alaska. It's the best jumping off point to the Yukon gold fields. From there, it's an easy hike and boat ride to Dawson City. From Skagway, you take the White Pass Trail through the mountains. It's not the shortest route, but it's the easiest. Once you get through the mountains, you just take a boat from Lake Labatters down to the Yukon River to Dawson, or down the Yukon River to Dawson. My English is pretty stupid. It's probably because my jaw is really misshapen. Can I buy supplies in Skagway? Naturally, the fine citizens of Skagway are dedicated to serving the needs of St. Peter such as yourself. You can buy whatever you need at very reasonable prices. I doubt that. Where does he say I can buy a ticket? There's a ticket office downtown. Remember to be sure to pack passage on a ship that's going to Skagway. Let's see what this guy says. Hmm, what kind of voice do I want for that mustachioed bastard? Hmm. 
shop now or you'll be sorry. Get all your Klondike supplies at Pioneer Outfitters. It's on the main street downtown. You can't miss it. We're open till 9 o'clock tonight. Don't get excited and rush away unprepared. You are going to a country where grub is more valuable than gold and frequently can't be bought for any price. But we just learned that you could buy very, at very good prices whatever you need at these two sounds. We can fit you up quicker than and, and better than any store or in or on the clock, whatever. This is why I don't do professional voice acting. Goodbye. I said good day to you, sir. Well, these are some very well-to-do looking folks. Hello. It's nice to meet you, acquaintance. Well, who the hell are you? I'm Ethel Berry, Clarence's wife. Thanks to our luck in the Yukon, we are probably the two wealthiest people in Seattle. Well, blow me. What are you going to do with all that money? The first thing we're going to do is buy me a diamond wedding ring. We were very poor when we married. We had money for a trip to Alaska or a wedding ring, but not both. Luckily, we decided to go to Alaska. So, greed and possibly killing your partner on the wild trails of the Yukon, way better than a wedding ring. Worth the risk. Very romantic. Well, before we stuck it rich and Claire... Wait. Before we stuck it rich and Claire... Wow, I can't read today. Well, before we stuck it rich, Clarence worked for long hours of short pay on a fruit farm in Fresno, California. I think we might go back and buy that farm. Because he had so many great memories on that farm. I would say the most important thing is find yourself a good partner. I don't think either Clarence or I could have made it alone. Probably couldn't have made it anyway. This is what Clarence has to say about it. Greeting stranger, welcome to Seattle. My jaw is locked and my face looks like I got hit with a snow shovel. My name is Clarence Berry. My wife and I just returned from the Yukon with more than $100,000 in gold. Well, that's fantastic. We just happened to be at the right place at the right time. I was tending bar at 40 miles. One day, an Austrian by the name of Antoine Stander came in. Stander said that he found a good claim, but he was flat broke and needed supplies. I gave him some money and half of a claim of my own in exchange for half of his claim. In just one winter of hard work, because working through the winter out there is probably a good idea, I took $140,000 in gold out of that claim. Congratulations. Well, I suppose there's two things you should know. First off, when we left Elson, there was hardly any food up there. If I were you, I'd plan on hauling in an outfit that'll last you at least a year, because nobody would steal it. If I were you, I'd buy it in Seattle. Things are cheaper here, plus you never know what you'll be able to find up north. Well, I'm definitely going to buy here in Seattle. Who the hell is this guy? There's one nice mustache, sir. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what voice to use for him. Yes, I'm one of the St. Peter's. Well, in case you haven't noticed, the whole U.S. economy has been in a depression for some time now. People have hardly any money. What little they do have, they've been squirreling away. Like nuts. That plus the prospect of venture... Nobody's stopping to think that they don't know anything about gold mining, or that they're leaving their jobs and family behind. Everybody's got visions, or delusions, of striking it rich. It's been mass hysteria here ever since news about the Klondike hit down. It seems like most every Seattle resident has the fever. Folks are leaving town as fast as they can. We've got nobody to run the streetcars. I haven't seen a policeman in days. TVs were free. The newspaper is losing its reporters. Even the mayor up and quit. <sighs> wow, it's voice acting is hard work. Well, let's go to the Northern Pacific. All right, now here we can pick our fella. Now I'm going to be doing four playthroughs of this, I think. Uh, each with a different person. 
Um, I think I'm going to start with Fatso here. Well, how do you do? My name is Midas T. Golden. Really? Midas T. Golden? Might you be seeking a partner? Well, I was planning on making this trip by myself. Well, yes, that was my original plan as well. However, several people advised me that it would be unwise to travel alone in the Yukon. <sighs> Gotta catch my breath. It takes a lot of calories to talk when you're this fucking fat. Something about dead inclement weather, I gather. Hmm. I'm a well-to-do businessman, and I'm willing to share my money with you. Well, I have $350 in cash. How much does he have? I have $750. And I would be happy to share it equally with you. So you'd put $350 in? Well, we're going to go ahead and take you to the Yukon with us. Delightful. Here I will address you with my cash. I'm talking like Forrest Gump now because life is like a box of chocolates. Would you be so kind as to purchase our tickets now? You're closer to the fucking desk. Why can't you purchase the fucking tickets? Step right up. The like that you're ready to get some tickets. Certainly, how can I help you? Hmm. Do you think I should go to Skagway or DIA? To tell you the truth, I don't think it matters much difference. The two towns are just a few miles apart. It suppose it just depends which ship you want. The most expensive ships are the most seaworthy. Now settle down, kids. I clearly look like a school teacher. They have the base captains and they're ready to depart later today. The medium price ships are reliable and they'll be sailing in a week or so. I'm turning in for a scalp like the other guy. The low-cost ships are coming out of retirement, so to speak. They're getting some repairs and won't be ready for a couple of weeks. Well, thanks for the information. Yeah, welcome. Where would you like to go? Some place with a box of chocolates? I'm going to go to the... Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure I want to go there. I want to check with my partner, actually. What is it, partner? I really don't know where we should go, but I hear Skagway is a pretty lively town. Maybe we should go there. Spare no expense. Let's get first class tickets on the most luxurious ship available. Okay, he wants to go to Skagway, so let's go to Skagway. Which ship would you like? The Al Key cost forty dollars per person. The Rosalie at thirty dollars per person, and the William at what a horrible name for a ship is twenty dollars. Is that twenty dollars per is these per person, or are they just literally flat price? But we're gonna go to the Alki. Certainly, that'll be eighty dollars for you and your partner. Have a safe journey. You probably won't make it through the night. Let's leave. Let's go to the Pioneers. Let's talk to this guy. Hello there. I have a wonderful beard. Is there something I can do for you? I need supplies for the trip to the Yukon. What the hell do you think? Well, I need to get the outfit. Yes, an outfit has everything that you and your partner will need. It has cooking supplies, mining supplies, cold weather clothing, a sled, and a supply of food. I'll go ahead and buy the outfit. And we're going to get the fat ass one because fat ass of my partner is probably going to eat most of that. Uh, I guess I accidentally clicked on the whipsaw. It's a big saw. And by the way, that's a whipsaw up there, I believe. It takes two people to operate. God, I keep going to Forrest Gump. Well, I will go ahead and get it. Okay, I keep clicking on shit. Let's just go ahead and get this fucking sled. Ugh, I'm tired of doing horrible voice acting. Let's talk to this dude. 
Hmm, he looks kind of like uh, the um, what is it? Uh, the tenth anniversary Dreamcast of Les Misérables. The same lead guy, Jean Valjean. So, I, if I could sing, I would just sing all of his lines in the form of Jean Valjean. What's what's his prisoner name? Two six four zero one. 24601, something like that. Completely different subject, though. Good day to you. Well, heading to the Yukon, I have some things for sale that will be of great interest to you. I'm selling some items that you will find to be very useful or valuable up in the Yukon. Today, I have a crate of caviar and I have a trail bicycle. Miners who have struck it rich will pay any price for exotic foods because they are still stupid miners. I'll sell you this caviar for only $10, but I'm sure you can resell it for at least five times that amount. That's not exactly accurate. Whew, I'm out of breath from that. Let's check with the partner. Hi, oh, caviar. A true delicacy. I'm certain it would prove very popular. God, you'd eat just about anything, wouldn't you? You know those are... Like fermented rotten fish eggs, right? So, would you like to get caviar? It's a deal. Tell me about the trail bicycle. It's a long haul from Skagway to Deer to the Klondike Gold Fields. It might take you three or four weeks to get there on food, but on a bicycle you can get there in just a few days, and it only costs ten bucks. Let's check with the partner. Yes, I'm not stuck in a mouse power. Let's buy it. Okay. <sighs> Nobody's ever warned me from wheeler dealers like him. But let's go ahead and get said trail bicycle. Now, the CD-ROM version, I sometimes talk to this guy and have like gold sniffing gophers and stuff. So I don't know if that's in this version. I hope it's in this version because that was awesome. And they were an utter waste of money. They cost a lot. And, uh, yeah, the fat guy here will always say, but get them. He wants the bicycle. Let's get the bicycle. I don't know what he wants to do with one bicycle. There's two of us. We have gear to haul. And we're going over really rocky, not paved, muddy trails. It's a deal. Thank you. Well, that's all I have to offer. Let's get going. I really do the part now. My jaw is really starting to hurt. Hey, we're on the L key. This might get loud. Uh, I apologize, any headphone users. I never get through here within like two or three months, even though it's a short distance. You'd think we'd be able to get through a lot quicker. Well, I'm not through a terrible storm. I hope the ship holds up. Better, I paid 80 bucks for this fucking ship. Of course, we have here a calendar. Yikes. Point of interest. The current population of Dawson City is 9,015. Yikes. Point of it. I'm like 10 miles outside of Seattle. I'm not even out of the bay yet. And you're telling me the population of Dawson City with a yikes. No, well. The speed of your ship is affected by three factors. The weather, the presence of rocks or icebergs. Hope we don't hit one of those. And the condition of the ship, whether or not it is collided with rocks or icebergs. There's nothing you can do about your ship's speed. You're at the mercy of your captain and the weather. You have already chosen your ship. There's nothing more you can do to affect its speed. Let's check our... Say, you want to hear something funny, partner? The captain and I were checking the car to cargo and we found a bicycle. We practically split a gut laughing. Just imagining somebody trying to ride that contraption over the mountains. Then we tossed it overboard. That was very funny. That cost me ten bucks. Some of the ship's cargo was damaged. Well, we have 2,400 pounds of food. We have $532 in cash. 
We still have the caviar that we bought in Seattle. We have an extra sled. Plenty of warm clothes. And a good tent. Oatmeal. I love oatmeal. I hope my partner knows how to bake bread. What? No peanut butter. Was peanut butter even invented in 1897? Possibly. I don't know. There sure are a lot of beans here. Anything else? We have dried fruit, dried potatoes, dried onions. Even the milk is dried. This guy really loves his oatmeal. I guess that's everything. Yeah. Um, we have here yeah, more beans. We have a whip saw. Our tools and mining supplies are in good shape. We still have cash left. Alright. Now, we're on the Pacific Ocean, in case you didn't know. It just seems to me that if we came through here and went around all of this, we could get through a lot quicker. Uh, each passing ship has southbound news. You know, everything's packed and mired in a mass confusion. Whatever, we don't care. British Columbians are coming. Alaska. Yeah, it just seems to me that if we just went into, you know, this side of all the things, remarkable totem poles are visible along the southeast coast of Alaska. They are made by Haida and Tlingit carvers. I have no clue if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, feel free not to correct me in the comments. Contrary to popular belief, the totem poles are not religious icons. Prepare for contradiction. But serve as symbols of significant people, events, and beliefs. So, religious icons. They could just say not all totems are religious icons. It looks like we're going to make the best time I've ever done. I usually end up getting there in August. But we're pretty close. And it's only halfway through September. Our ship collided with that iceberg. But the fate seemed to be with us. Everything seems to be all right. We have to wait a few more years for a big ship to sink from an iceberg. Of course, now we're going to be going slower, so we might not make it before August. Now we're going to Skagway. Did we really hit another rock? We did hit another rock, didn't we? Our captain's drunk. Lean Canal is the entrance of both Daya and Skagway. The first leg of the journey is at an end. Word has it that unloading supplies from the ship will be a nightmare for one thing everyone's supplies are mixed together in the cargo area. Nobody put name tags on it. Then, waiting in Skagway and Daya are men, pirates really, who are trying to collect huge fees for ferrying your supplies and chore. Are we in Skagway yet? Now we're in Skagway. We have a ride at Skagway. What's this? Hundreds crowd the street, steamers, ships hustle over, off overloaded. Hmm. Uh, so, the steamer, Cleveland. There's a photo studio. Did this guy just wave at me? Pretty sure I saw somebody waving at me, and I'm pretty sure it's this guy right here. <laughs> Another Stampede, what do you want? Dude, you waved at me or being all friendly? Who the fuck are you? I'm God William Moore. I set up this town back in 1888 to take advantage of the White Pass Trail. How do you take advantage of a trail? Now all these newcomers are taking over. Well, how did you come here in the first place? I've been looking for good of my life. Been to California. Peru, you name it. Stick your inch more than once. My son's right up here looking for gold in the Yukon. They didn't exactly find any, but he told me about a rumor of a hidden mail passed into the Yukon. I came up to see for myself. I had a hunch it would be a big strike, and I figured it would be build a railroad to the pass. Yeah, go ahead, build a railroad over that. You're looking at me, be the first white man to cross it. 
Back in 1887, an Indian named Skookum Jim. I don't think that was given to him by his tribe. And I surveyed the whole trail. I named it after Sir Thomas White, the Canadian Minister of the Interior. Because I'm American. And what about Skagway? Well, it's named for an Indian word that means the home of the North Wind. And I've seen, never seen a more beautiful place in all my life. I set up a trading post here in 88, and I've just been waiting for the gold rush to begin. As a matter of fact, I ain't really a bit happy. These stampeders just came in and acted like they owned the place. They took my wife, they took my booze, they took my cars, they took my dog, they took my paddle ball, and they took my lamp. The worst of the lots is the scoundrel Soapy Smith. They even told me they gotta move my house to make way for a road. I'll go to court and prove that ass land is mine. In the meantime, I got a plan to strike it rich. I thought you already struck it rich multiple times. I'm building a pier. Everybody will have to pay me to use it. Well, you're just an asshole. If I were you, I'd get up there as fast as you can. There was already a bunch of sourdoughs in the Klondike when the gold was discovered, and there's thousands of stampeders on their way now. Most of them will die horrible, horrible deaths. Hello, friend. Can I interest you in a simple game of Find the Nugget? Sir, that... I... Look, I'm flattered, but you are not my type. Oh, this is cup and ball, isn't it? I got three cups and one nugget, see? And I put the nugget under one of the cups, and then I move the cups around. So far, so good. Then what? When I stop, you tell me which cup is high in the nugget. I'm willing to bet you can't do it. If you guess right, you win the bet. Let's see him do it. His disembodied hands. I'll give it a try. I'll bet five bucks. Five dollars it is. Let me know when you're ready. Middle one. No! Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you missed it that time. Would you like to try again? No, you fucking cheated. Fuck you. Now we can go to D, yeah, if we wanted to, but he really wants to. Hello, I'm supposed to look for some of the higher supplies. Sorry, I can't help you. I don't really care. If you can't help me, go fuck off. Hello, friend. You look like a real sharpshooter. You can tell just by looking at him, man, you know? Especially your big fat friend there from the city. He's probably real good with a rifle. How would you like to try a hand at a little game of skill? I put some targets on conveyor belts. When I set the belts moving, you shoot as many targets as you can. This is going to be easy to do with a laptop mouse pad. What else do I need to know? You get 25 bullets. You get 25 points for hitting a plate, 50 points for hitting a big bottle, and 100 points for hitting a small bottle. You need exactly 1,000 points to win. So if I have 1,025, I don't win. I'm here for $5 to play. A drop in the bucket for well-to-do Sam Peter such as yourself. I'm not the one to do one here. Talk to the fat guy. What do the targets look like? Alright, so these plates, 25 bucks. Man, those are nice plates. It's like Grandma's China up there that we're shooting. Liquor bottles, because everybody here is an alcoholic. Medicine and perfume bottles, because nobody needs medicine or perfumes. Sweating their asses off on the trail and getting sick. Mm, I see. I don't know what I actually hit there. What can I win? If you get exactly a thousand points, I'll tell you where the best gold mining spot in the Yukon. Hmm. I have a feeling she doesn't know where to go. Let's play it, though. We get the money. Well, I'm doing great.
Bet you never seen a good sharpshooter like this. Six bullets. I don't think I can do it. Oh, God. Why does it have to be exactly a thousand points? Yeah, I'll try it again. I want to know what the best gold spot is. I got the money to spare. I obviously don't have the aim, though. This is fucking tricky. I dare you to try this, guys. Okay. Doing good. Well, I was doing good. Need three more of these little bottles. Two more of these little bottles. One more. Okay, now I just intentionally missed all my bullets. Oh, it's so hard. Yeah, the only sir doesn't think you're crazy for digging there, but it's in the hills above the west bank of the El Dorado. El Dorado Creek. Remember that, folks. The old sour now sank out of gold is near the stream beds. They're probably right. Mm-hmm. They can't believe it, it could rise into the hills. Well, gold is pretty heavy. It probably doesn't rise on its own. So how did the gold get there? There's an ancient stream bed buried under the hills. It's full of gold. What's been found in El Croco... El Croco... El Croco... God! El Dorado Creek is really what sunk down from the original source of gold. Why, thank you. Well, let's go to Soapy Saloon. That guy looks friendly. Hello, neighbor. Name's one eye Jack. Could you move a little to the left here so I can see you? How about a friendly game card? I'm dealing a game called Yukon. Uh, you know what? We'll do that on another playthrough. Let's just go ahead and hit the White Pass Trail. Yes, Fatso, we should get on the White Pass Trail now. Remember, El Dorado Creek. West Bank. East Bank? West Bank? What well, I don't remember. Good going, I already forgot. Now, this is mostly just waiting around. -da 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 -da. At least I got here before October, oh, and now the meal train ahead of us refuses to move. Now, unlike Oregon Trail, you can't actually die in this that I know of. Can you imagine get, trying to get a horse with a full load over this jumble of boulders and full, fallen trees? Can you imagine trying to do it with a full load on your own back? Well, we figure out eventually, we read one of these, that says uh, that we travel a couple of feet with a load, go back for the other load, bring more with us. We have two people and two sleds. We shouldn't have to do this. Ah. <sighs> And we're dealing with thousands of stampeders. Maybe we could have found a different way around. But, well, well. We're making pretty good time, though. I think. But we're going to go ahead and switch to a medium load. To speed up a bit. It doesn't really matter a whole lot because... Um, we get to a certain point. Confound this trail. That was a nasty spell you took. I believe we'd better stop and let it real rest for a day or two. So I am stopped. Let's keep moving. Uh, but we won't be able to progress through the winter anyway. We will have to wait till spring. White Pass City. Let me see what our food stock is. We got plenty of food. But let's go ahead and get a little bit more food. Hello, stranger. Is there something I could do for you? Didn't I see you in Seattle? 
Glad to see you made it this far. You're a little bit slow, though. I was able to come up here, build a store, and get everything stocked before you got here. Let's try to sell my caviar. Uh, yeah, that's totally five times ten dollars. Yeah, let's see. Caviar, it's a deal. Probably could have sold that to the other people, but I doubt I'm going to make much money. I uh, just want to get some food. Um... Let's get the 800 pounds, because people are going to be stealing the fuck out of our food. That's what happens when you have to leave food behind. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll talk to these guys later on. Mm. She camped a couple weeks ago, three months worth of food and supplies, which I feared would be more than enough to give you a dozen. And everything first, I didn't realize how hard it was to carry supplies over the mountains. I can't imagine knowing that it would be very, very difficult to carry thousands of pounds of food over the mountains either. Never worked so hard in my life. You don't look like you worked very hard during this either, you. Got a really nice trim mustache there. I mean, it's bushy, but it's nicely maintained. And when it's about halfway into the summer, I got caught up in a blizzard. The only thing I could do was wait. He did stop snowing for 10 days. When I finally got to the summit, the mountains wouldn't let me pass. It required everyone to have a full year's worth of food and supplies. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm broke. I can't afford to buy more supplies. I can't afford to take home. Turn around. It's time for to go home. Well, that's... Good God, you're useless. Just, uh... Oh, I can't... I can't talk to the doggy. I thought I could talk to the doggy. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine heading backwards through that? Let's continue down the White Pass Trail. Yes, let's keep going. Now this is going to be a fairly long video. Probably roughly about an hour, I think. Oh, that's, you know, for kids. Dead and rotting horses. You know, all the little girls that played this probably cried during this if they uh, didn't get bored by now. Doing their own voice acting and stuff. Uh, but Jack London, bastard here, he wrote, The horses died like mosquitoes in the first frost. And from Skagway to Bennett, they rotted in heaps. They died at the rocks, they were poisoned at the summit, and they starved at the lakes. You know, for kids. We're still continuing along here. We managed to get most of the way down this trail um, into Canada in a month. Like in Canada. My whole head just kind of moves whenever I talk because I'm Canadian. The Northwest Matter Police at your service. I have a, you have a right to divide between the United States District of Alaska and the Northwest Territories of Canada. As a charge of being a Dawson, we're here to make sure you and your partner are bringing enough supplies for yourselves. We're also collecting non part tax. You must pay tax to bring American goods into Canada. My men have taken inventory of your food and supplies. You have enough. Now all you need to do is pay the import tax. That'll be a hundred dollars, please. I don't think I've ever gotten here with less than a hundred dollars. I'm gonna to have to try that on one of these runs. And see what happens. So now we are in Canada. And it only took a month to get there. Do mm, so you want to stop and how come you never fall? But I'm not stopping. Fuck that. I wonder what to Oh fucking rock slides, man. Fortunately. Uh, too many fucking humans out here. Fortunately, <sighs> Canadians, man, they'll steal your shit. Never trust a Canadian. I think that's the moral of the story here. If you're American, don't trust a Canadian. The meadows served as a good place to camp and rest on the way from the summit down to Lake Bennett. Oh my god, that was so boring. That I literally broke out and yawned halfway through that. Ooh. 
More of our food has been stolen. Fucking Canadians, man. <sighs> you think the Canadians would just be like, no, no, nobody can get through here. We're going to take the gold for ourselves. Use it to buy. Oh, you have finally injured yourself. And you know what? I didn't stop moving when I broke my fucking leg three times, so you keep moving too, buddy. Fatso. Alright, we are almost in December, so... It's going to get very, very cold. Yes, we are in the easiest part of the trail right now, and you are falling more than ever. You notice it's mostly flat ground through here. I don't know if I actually activated my cursor or not to record. So I'm pointing at stuff on the screen and you probably can't see it. The Northwest Mounted Police built a log cabin to keep tabs on the stampeders on the way to the summit to Lake Bennett. Okay. So there's a log cabin there. Uh, the bounties are... Jeez. Man, that was so boring. Do you ever hurt anything other than your leg? No, we're going to keep going. Maybe if you weren't such a fucking oaf. Fat fuck. Let's get to Lake Bennett. We're almost there. We're almost Lake Bennett. This is like the worst part of any journey. You take a road trip, you're one mile from your destination, it takes like six years. Fucking Yule Train, man. They're all probably packed up each other's ass there at Lake Bennett. So I get to Alaska quicker than I ever have, and it takes me longer to do this one step because fat ass here won't stop falling. Uh, see? No, we're going to keep moving. It doesn't seem to affect our speed any. I'll be here till spring. I could like panic. I'll be here till spring. While you're waiting, you don't need to build a boat. We all look exactly the same. Because we are actually Imperial Stormtrooper clowns. I'm Sam Steele of the Northwest Mounted Police. I'm here to make sure that all persons remain here safely until spring. In Canada, you'll find none of the laws this this in the Alaskan towns. That's why it wasn't until I got into Canada that people kept stealing all my shit. My band and I resolved to speak to my conductors. We were to recording the name and home address of every single person. More than 7,000 so far. In case of an exit, we want to be able to inform the next again. Well, that's reassuring. You'll need some logs and whipsaw. When you have those, you'll need to look at the boat plants by the sign by the lake. Eh, uh, whatever. Oh, I can talk to this doggy. Ruff. Well, who are you? Ruff, ruff. How did you get here? <laughs> I, I, I apologize for that. Uh, I don't feel like talking to anybody on this run. We have more runs. Now I know from experience that this boat is okay. Sorry for the yawns. Damn. I need a Red Bull. This boat is the best, and this boat is the absolute worst. I'm going to go plan two because it's the best. Basically making a canoe here. Yep, I'm totally sure that this fat ass here can build a boat. Spring is here. The ice is broken up. My men have examined your boat and pronounced it fit. Some other St. Peter's have arrived at Lake Bennett before you did. Therefore, you must wait two days before you can depart. I don't think I've ever had a chance where I could just depart immediately. Oh, uh, well. So, it's fucking May. Up cross, upon crossing Lake Bennett, you come to a portage, a path between two bodies of water. You can car you have to carry your boat and supplies about 75 feet from Lake Bennett to Tagish Lake. It's a caribou crossing, apparently. Yeah. The 50 Mile River. Many stampeders stop here to rest, repair the boats, and plan how to navigate Miles Canyon. Alright, so here we are. This is. Probably what most people play this game for, other than the actual gold digging, which is really underwhelming. This is, as in Oregon Trail, the infamous rafting scene. 
I think it's the same as uh, navigating the rapids in Amazon Trail, Oregon Trail, Yukon Trail. I think they're all the same maps even. I'll know for a fact. Now this boat's also really fast. But... Uh, this is not easy to do using a mouse, you know, trackpad thing on a laptop. Uh, okay, I'm assuming that I am almost at the end. Don't get sucked into the rock. This is uh, this is like the most challenging part of the game because you can damage your boat, you have to repair it, you can lose some supplies. Oh dear, I'm afraid our boat was damaging those rapids. We could spend a few days trying to fix it, or perhaps we should spend a week building a new boat. I suppose we could even continue down the river in a damaged river boat, but at a slower pace. We'll repair it. It takes like four days to do. Uh, White Horse Rapids. Gonna try to go around that rock. Yeah. Skills, motherfucker. So much skills I can warp back left and right. Uh, I don't think uh, it matters how long it takes you to navigate this thing. So if you want to keep running into the shore, uh, I'm pretty sure it does not affect the game in any way. It's the east or west coast of the El Dorado River. Hmm. I guess we'll figure it out when we get there. Because we're going to be there not too long. I think we have like two more of these. I could be incorrect on that. One or two. Mm. Well, we're doing pretty good. Making great time now. It's fucking June. It's nice and warm up here. Mm, I think we still have Five Finger Rapids, don't we? Yeah, Five Finger Rapids right here. We're going to try to go around to the right here. I find that staying on the right side is the safest. Most people give you advice on that as well, if you bother talking to them. I will talk to them on other playthroughs. Um, didn't really feel like doing it on this playthrough and everything, because we are already at like the 47, 48 minute mark. Oh, I thought it was going to, I thought it was going to, eat some gravel there um, but next playthrough I'll cover some things that I haven't skip some things I have covered but we're already coming up on 50 minutes I didn't feel like doing all the talking and reading for everything on one playthrough just takes too damn long we are almost at Dawson founded by Jack we have arrived in Dawson Okay. I have press it, read all about it. Let's get a newspaper. Let's see if we can sell our... Alright, we could... Sure, there's no problem. Awesome. So we just wasted a day. Alright. Eldorado Creek. So let's go here. We will search here. Nothing. 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 Well, that, uh, didn't help very much. Let's try this far away thing. I'm just trying to think that woman was lying to me. Nothing. Let's try this one. Gold dust. Let's test this claim some more. Nope. Nope. This claim sucks. It's Hunkar Creek. 
Well, under Harder Creek is a waste. So let's try Hunker. We want to find a place that has lots of golden nuggets. Nothing. Some small golden nuggets. Gold dust. Let's try another claim. We're eventually going to be out of claims to test. So we're going to have to settle with one. I think the best gold thing I've ever found in one of these is uh, like 80,000. Nothing. Nothing worthwhile. We are seriously running out of places to stake here. Um, yeah, this is uh, not looking promising. Hmm. Got to be something. Yeah, we're uh, let's try another claim. We we can stake a useless claim. Now this is our last opportunity, I think. So we're gonna pretty much have to stake this regardless. So we're definitely not gonna get a good score here. So we have some gold dust here. Let's try another claim. Do we have no, we don't really have another claim. Well we can go to Chicago Hill here. Which I think I found some gold dust or small nuggets or something yet. Uh Let's go ahead and stake this claim. This claim's not paying off. Let's stake it. Now, this is the exciting gold digging part. I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she ain't messing with the... Uh, won't go there. Oh, this is exciting. I know. The last time you saw this much excitement, you were probably... Uh, watching grass grow. Take a drink of milk there. I've had that milk sitting on my desk for uh, the entirety of this playthrough. And almost an hour long, so. Um, it's still nice and cold. And by nice and cold, I mean no. <laughs> it's on its way to becoming cheese. Mmm, cheese. This gold claim is actually paying off better than I expected. Uh, I did a test playthrough of this because uh, old games like this is very difficult to run on modern hardware and things like that. And uh, I crashed a couple of times and when I did manage to get a full playthrough in so I knew it worked, I made, uh, I think, 800 gold. Not even one of these bags, really. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not bad. Congratulations, Trent. You're right. Would you, hey, would you like to make a little sourdough, would you? Congratulations, friend. You're rich. Say you would want to bankroll an old sourdough, would you? I heard a big rumor of a big strike over by Nome. Sir, given your commandment of the English language, no, I have no interest in bankrolling you. Um, okay, so I got like 15,000 on my test, successful test playthrough, so that's a significant boost. And that test playthrough, I found nuggets in every place that I tested on that claim. Uh, ended on the same day, of course. But, uh, yeah, that is the Yukon Trail. 
And uh, next time I'll be playing with a different guide. I will see a couple different sites, talk to a few different people. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this. So uh, let me know what you want to see in the future. Um, uh, I'll see if I can make it happen. Uh, I've been trying to get Oregon Trail Edition 5 to run on this system. I have not had any luck on it. Um, can't even really get it to install. I will work on it. I'm running this to on play on Linux through Wine and all that. Uh, it's just really outdated, really obsolete, very hard to get working. Much like Civilization 2, which nobody can get working on modern machines. Um, but if I get it working, I'll play through that as well. So until then, uh, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. See you next time on the Yukon Trail.